So today's video is on the topic of convenience yield in the futures market. Now if you're new to derivatives, do take a look at my other videos about financial derivatives and finance in general. These videos are all based on a book that I wrote a few years ago called Trading and Pricing Financial Derivatives. And that's available on Amazon if you're interested. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, so let's dig into today's topic, which is convenience yield. And this is sort of the third video um, on pricing futures that I have. And it, it makes sense to watch the other two first if, if, uh, if this is a new topic to you. Um, this topic, convenience yield, is something that confuses many finance students. So I'll try to explain it as well as I, I can here. So users of a consumption asset, and by a consumption asset I mean one that has a use in daily life. Uh, maybe it's used in manufacturing or it's used for sustenance or it's needed by businesses or individuals in their daily lives and it gets used up in that process. So users of these products might obtain a benefit from actually owning the asset rather than owning a futures or a forward contract. They need the actual product and not a derivative that gives them the financial equivalence of owning that product. The really classic example, the example that's used in every textbook, is the idea of heating oil in the winter. So, uh, and it's argued that people would happily pay more for physical heating oil in the winter than they, that they can use up right now to heat their houses than they would pay for a future or a forward on heating oil that maybe will be delivered in a few months time um, you know when it's summertime and they don't you know they're they're not sitting there cold and so any of these kind of consumption assets that are used and that have a real need for them can exhibit this uh, this pricing uh, thing that we call convenience yield so this benefit, the benefit that people get from owning the actual asset rather than a derivative on that asset is known as convenience yield. Everyone who owns inventory has the choice between consumption today versus investment for the future. And a rational individual is going to choose the outcome that's best for them. The example that I often give to students in my class, I, I came up with this, I, I teach this class usually in, in the winter, kind of shortly uh, around the Christmas months. And so the example that I came up with a few years ago um, was that in the weeks leading up to Christmas, people will usually pay a good amount of money, we'll say a hundred pounds or more for a Christmas tree. And they know full well that the week after Christmas that these things will be littering the, the sidewalk of the city. So I used to put a, in my class a photo of, uh, of some Christmas trees on the sidewalk and say, well, why did people spend a hundred pounds on these a week ago when you could walk around town and collect them all for free today? And so the answer to that is convenience yield. It's a, a similar example, I guess, to, to heating oil in the winter. People don't have a, a need to have a, a tree in their living room in general. They just want to have it at the time of year. You know, they want to have it for Christmas. Either they're having a party or they have children or whatever. And it, it's an appropriate seasonal decoration, but for some reason, not a, a great year-round decoration for your living room. And so, how do we deal with this idea of convenience yield, of something that you'd pay more to have right now than you'd pay for the, the sort of financial equivalent of? Well, luckily it's, it's a fairly simple adjustment to our futures pricing formula. And so if you don't know about our futures pricing formula, do look at the, the earlier video that I did on that. But we're going to take our regular formula and add in y which is the symbol used for convenience yield. So we're going to adjust our simple formula that I explained earlier to this. So F0, which is the price of a futures contract right now, or at time zero, equals S, which is the price of the underlying right now, once again at time zero, times E, which is Euler's number, to the R plus U minus Y to the T. So R is the interest rate, U is storage costs, which we also covered in an earlier video, and that's only if applicable. And then Y 
is of course convenience yield. T is the time to expiration of our futures, our forward contract. So there you go. Hopefully that makes sense to you and now you, you know everything you need to know about convenience yield. But hold on, we haven't explained something. Where did we get the number for Y? We didn't get that number because no one could tell us that. We can't actually know how much more someone will pay at a given time to receive the underlying right now rather than, than waiting for the future. So, it's important to understand that Y is actually backed out from market prices. You can never be given a number for convenience yield in real life and be told that that's, that's the additional percentage people will pay. Instead, what you do is you reverse it out from market prices um, so that you can understand what convenience yield the market is implying for that asset right now at this given point in time. So it's a little bit different. It's, it's the reason I made a separate video for convenience yield rather than our other pricing formulas is the convenience yield is quite different simply because it's backed out of market prices rather than a number that you know that you can put in and, and, uh, and price a future or a forward. So hopefully now that makes sense to you. You will of course need a financial calculator to calculate all of these formulas and I've put links in the description below to the two that are used on the CFA exams. I've mentioned this in earlier videos that if you don't have a financial calculator it possibly makes sense to get one of those ones just in case you do the CFA exam. Obviously if you've already got a financial calculator you can use that one. Um, these, the two calculators that are recommended both do the exact same thing but they work a little bit differently so take a look at the reviews before you, you buy uh, the one that appeals most to you. Hopefully you found this video helpful, if so please like, please subscribe, please share it with your friends and equally do comment below if there's something you'd like me to explain, uh, if there's a financial topic you'd like me to go over. Anyhow, have a great day, talk to you later, bye.